Welcome back to Firestorm Games and another how to quickly paint guide. This time I'll be showing you how to paint the Clone Lord himself, Fabius Bio, and get him onto the gaming table in as few steps as possible. And as always, I'll be using the Citadel range of paints to do so. The first step in painting is always to prime, and this is so that later layers of paint can properly adhere to the surface of the model. As you can see, I've chosen a black primer for this task due to uh, the fact that it'll act as shading, which we'll be creating in the next step. You will note that I've also partly assembled this model to make it easier to paint. I've kept the arms and backpack separate from the torso, as this will make our task much easier. The bulk of this guide will see us using contrast paint, but in order for them to work, we need to apply a lighter paint like that of Wraithbone on top of our black primer. The easiest and quickest way to do this is with dry brushing. Dry brushing requires taking a large and preferably rounded brush like this one here, dipping it into your paint and then wiping the brush onto a piece of paper towel or tissue. This will remove any excess paint and will help to work the paint through the bristles. With the brush prepped, we can start to apply some downward, quick strokes to the surface of the model. By only applying a light amount of pressure here, you should find that the paint accumulates to the large flat surfaces, but not in the recessed areas. Because of the primer we used, these areas remain black and so appear as shadows, which help to bring out the level of detail that without the need for washes. You'll want to continue this technique across the whole model, which will result in a lighter tan base color. Now that we have a lighter base color, we can begin to apply our contrast paints and get some color onto the model. To start off, we'll be applying some Magos Purple over the Biles armor. This will be the first of two steps and will help to create the purple armor of Fabius Bile. You can apply this paint straight from the pot, which should give the armor a slight purplish hue whilst maintaining the areas of shadow that the dry brush created. At the moment, the armor is a little too pale, so we need to boost the strength of the purple with some shyish purple. By applying this a little less heavily than in the last step, we can create a good approximation of Horus Heresy Era Emperor's Children armor. Using some Gilliman flesh, we can start to tackle the fleshy areas of the model. These areas include the coat, the flesh cage on the power pack, and the skin on the shoulder pad. Leave the face of Bile and his severed head alone for the time being, as we'll be tackling these later on. For the gloves, the tool belt, and the straps holding the coat together, we can apply a layer of Seigal Brown, which will result in a reddish brown color. Perfect for the brown leather effect that we are looking to create. Next, we will be tackling the bone of the skulls that top the vials and the rod of torment. These can be easily painted with a quick layer of skeleton horde. To give all of those vials and pipes a bright blue color that will really help to stand out against some of the more muted tones of the model, we will be using some ethermatic blue. After applying your first layer and allowing it to dry, you can apply a second layer to the bottom halves of the vials to create the appearance that they are filled with potent liquids. The next task is to paint the metal areas of the model, but before we can do so, we first need to thin down the paint a little. So I've got some Corvus Black here, and I'm going to mix in roughly the same amount of water with it so the consistency is similar to that you see here. We can then use this thin paint to cover the areas that make up the steel parts of the model, like the arm joints, the weapons, and mechanical arms. I'm using Corvus Black here because it's not quite as stark as pure black, so will result in a blackened steel effect after we apply a silver highlight. Optionally, if you wanted to boost the detail over these areas, then by using Corvus Black here, you'll be able to make use of a non-oil wash later on. For the gold trim of the armor and equipment, we will be applying a layer of Retributor armor. Like before, create a slightly thin mixture and apply a couple of layers in order to get the best coverage possible. Following on from our early Corvus Black base coat, I will next be applying a thin highlight of a lead belcher. By targeting this silver paint to just the edges, we create the result of a blackened steel, with the edge highlights appearing as scratches and dents. To give Bile's face and his severed head a more subtle and pallid skin tone, we will next be employing a wash of Reichland Flesh Shade. 
This wash can also be applied over the areas that we painted with Attributor Armor. This wash will flow into the recesses of these areas and help to emphasize the details by creating some shading. The final step is to help bring out some of the details in those leather areas. Continuing with the reddish brown leather effect, we want to use some scrag brown to pick out the more pronounced edges, which will help to emphasize those details. Whilst this miniature certainly won't win any awards, it's a quick way of getting your miniatures painted and getting around to gaming as quickly as possible. And you can use the scheme to represent the Emperor's Children or other creations of Bile units. If you enjoyed this guide to getting your miniatures painted and ready for gaming in as little time as possible, then please do let us know in the comments below. And if you have any suggestions for future tutorials, then let us know those as well. You can find this kit and all of the paints used in this video on the Firestorm Games web store for at least 10% off the RRP, and you can find a link to the site in the description below. And so we just want to finish off by saying a big thank you for watching this video, and we hope to see you again on Firestorm Games.